Good morning. This morning we're continuing our series on prayer and God's answers. We've heard, haven't we, of Hezekiah's prayer and the miraculous deliverance that God gave him and his country from the massive army that surrounded them. We've heard of Hannah's prayer, how Hannah prayed for a son and God gave her, in answer, the boy who was later to become the prophet Samuel. We've looked at Moses, how Moses wanted to see more of God, to know him better, and God answered that prayer as well. In each of these examples, we have seen how God, how and what people prayed. In my case, I have a, a little bit of a hard job because the prayer I'm talking about has no recorded words. I'm sure there were words, but we don't know what they were. Perhaps they were not so important. We're looking at Elijah's prayer in 1 Kings 18. We will also consider what happened before and after to get the full effect. The king of Israel at the time was Ahab. Now Ahab was a wicked king. The Bible says that Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any other king before him. And they were pretty bad as well. But into this dark time, Elijah steps. We don't know much about him, but we know that he's someone who heard God, who did what God said, and who told other people also what God was saying. So Elijah went to Ahab and said to Ahab that because of his wickedness, there would be no rain in the land for a few years. He didn't say the, how long it would actually be. And then he went away. And sure enough, there was no rain. At the beginning of chapter 18, uh, Elijah is told to go back. And it says, after some time, after some time, after a long time, God told him to go back. This is followed by the dramatic contest on Mount Carmel between Elijah on one side and the 450 prophets of Baal on the other. The task was to bring fire from heaven. They had an altar, they had a sacrifice, and then they had to call out, and whichever God answered by fire, that one would be acknowledged as the true God. Elijah wanted to show the people that the Lord is God and they should serve him, not Baal, and certainly not a mixture of the two. So the prophets of Baal prayed, nothing happened. Elijah prayed, the fire fell from heaven. The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, had brought down the fire. And then we come to our passage. Elijah had seen God work in this amazing way before this crowd of people. But by this time, everybody has gone apart from him, his servant, Ahab, and presumably his servants. Elijah said to him, to Ahab, go eat and drink because the rain is coming. Now remember, there had been no rain for more than three years by this time. But is this the moment? Ahab does as Elijah says. And Elijah goes on his own up to the top of the mountain with his servant. And he prays. He bows low and he puts his face between his knees. The man who called for fire in front of a crowd of people is now humbling himself on his own before God. It does not say what he prayed. I sometimes like to imagine what might have happened, what people might have been thinking and feeling. I used to be a primary school teacher and it was my privilege to tell Bible stories and sometimes to get the children to act them out. I did this with the story of Joshua and the battle for Jericho. The children were the soldiers. On the first day, I told them they had to march around the city, the city in this case being the classroom. Off they went, the front ones in the front making trumpet noises, 
the ones behind following silently. On the second day, I said, you need to do the same thing again. Off they went. Third day, same again. Fourth, fifth, sixth, sooner or later, but inevitably, a child would call out, not again. I imagine Elijah's servant may have felt like this. Elijah sent him to look towards the sea. He saw nothing. Elijah continued praying. The servant went a second time. Nothing. He went a third time. Still nothing. Did Elijah know how long this was going to take? I'm sure the servant didn't know. Elijah knew, though, that he had to keep on praying. And the servant knew that he had to keep on doing what Elijah said. Maybe by the seventh time, the servant was also praying for an end to this. Please, God. And perhaps this time he looks, as he goes to the sea, he looks closely in hope. And he sees this time there is something. There's a small cloud rising out of the sea. So he returns jubilantly to Elijah and says, there's a small cloud. It's quite little, just about the size of a man's hand, but it's definitely there. Now Elijah knows that this is the sign that rain will come. A small cloud will become a bigger cloud. From a small cloud, a large downpour can come. And it did. Black clouds, high wind, heavy rain. Though God had promised the rain would come, Elijah still had to pray for it. In Zechariah 10 verse 1, it says, Pray for rain in the time of the spring rains. The spring rains were when the rain would come. So why pray for something that's going to happen anyway? It's in God's hands, whether to give or to withhold. It might be that something happens regularly all the time, but it's still in God's hands. It can change. Haven't we seen in this last year that things we've taken for granted are not necessarily given? Who would have known a year ago that Schools would be shut to most children for months on end. Who would have known that you could have arrived at a doctor's surgery and outside it would say, don't come in if you're ill? All good gifts come from God. When things happen that normally happen, pray and give thanks. God is gracious. Sometimes he answers our prayers straight away as he did with Elijah and the fire. But very often, we need to be more persistent. Seven times in this case, Elijah prayed. Seven times the servant went to and fro. What if he'd stopped praying at six times? What if Joshua had only got them to march six days, but these knew they had to keep going? Hebrews 12 says, run with patience the race set before you. James, in his letter, writing about the prayer of faith, says that Elijah was a man just like us. But as his prayer of faith, his example of a prayer of faith, he doesn't take the time when Elijah prayed for a dead boy and brought him back to life. He doesn't take that. He doesn't take the time when Elijah called out for fire from heaven, doesn't take that. This is what he takes. This example is the one he takes, where Elijah first of all prays that there won't be rain, and there wasn't. And then he prays that there will be rain, and the rain came. In the story of the friend at midnight, we know this well. Uh, the man goes to his friend because he's got unexpected guests and needs some food. 
But the man is in bed and his children are in bed. He doesn't want to get up. But in the Amplified Version, this is the final verse of that, of that story. It says this, I tell you, although he will not get up and supply him with anything because he is his friend, yet because of his shameless persistence and insistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Some years ago, a man came to preach at our church. I think his name was Michael. I'm not sure, but I'm going to call him Michael. He spoke in many churches, and on one occasion, he told us of when he'd been somewhere, and after speaking, a woman came up to him and said, are you the Michael that used to live at such and such an address when you were young? Michael agreed that he was. And the woman said, I have prayed for you since that time when your parents wouldn't let you come to our church children's holiday club. I wanted to pray that God would reach you even though we couldn't. I wrote your name in my Bible. And when I got a new Bible, I wrote your name there so that I would continue to pray. This woman prayed not knowing how or when God would answer her prayer or if she would even know about it. That is persistence. Michael became a Christian and not only that, he became someone who shared the good news with many other people. Not all Elijah's prayers were answered in the way he wanted. Sometimes it may seem like God is ignoring our prayers when in fact he's just delaying them, delaying the answer. Shortly after praying for rain, Elijah is threatened by Queen Jezebel. Queen Jezebel, Ahab's wife, wants to kill him. So Elijah ran away to the desert. He prayed. And we've got words for this one. He prayed, God, I've had enough. I want to die. And God said, actually, we don't know what God said. But in my imagination, God says, Elijah, you can, but not yet. Because, you see, it wasn't God's plan for Elijah to die in despair in the desert. That wasn't his plan. He had something much better planned for his departure. His plan for Elijah was that he should leave not in defeat, but in victory. You can read about this in 2 Kings chapter 2. It involves a chariot of fire. Thank God. Thank God that he doesn't always answer our prayers straight away. He doesn't always answer exactly how we want. So let's pray and give thanks. Even if God has already said something, even if it normally happens, pray, give thanks. All good gifts come from God. And let's keep praying. We don't know how long it's going to take. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and you will receive. The Amplified Version again says, keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently. I like that. And the door will be opened. And if the answer is delayed, trust God. We only see a poor reflection of God and his ways. We do not know everything. We cannot see everything, but God can. Know that if my prayer is delayed, God has got something better. Better than I or you could think. Better than I or you could ever imagine. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're a God who answers prayer. Lord, thank you that you answer in your own time and in your own way. 
And thank you that your, your answers, your plans, your plans, Lord, are better and higher than our plans and our ways. Lord, help us to pray. Help us to keep on praying. Help us to trust you, Lord, when the answer is delayed. Thank you that you are a good God and you care for us. We yield ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name. Amen.